Okay, good evening guys. Uh, before we start as always, let's do our customer instant poll. Let's check everyone can hear the volume correctly. I'm going to put this on your screens now. Please let me know if you can hear the sound perfectly, too loud or too low. To indicate by pressing 1, 2 or 3. Um, getting the majority of people saying perfect. So unless there's anybody with any severe problems, let's get started. Okay guys, so what we're going to talk about today is advanced candlestick formations with um, trading with oscillators. Now again, uh, I have to stress, this is advanced, so there's a lot of information we're going to take in over the next hour. So again, as always, it's recorded, so we can go back and revisit um, what's been said tonight. But uh, this is very, very crucial, very, very important that we understand how candlesticks work within the market and how we chart and plot candlesticks, because that's what every serious trader uses. And again, by overlaying certain oscillators and trading with these signals, it makes it all the more profitable and more understandable when we're trading to uh, you know, where our entry point should be where our level of interest should be so again it's uh it's a brand new presentation it took a long time to uh, to write this presentation and to bring it to you guys tonight so uh, again i hope you enjoy it it is the first run so again it's as new to me obviously i wrote it but it's just new to me presenting it is uh, to you guys hearing it so again guys for a start as always the usual stuff i need to read the risk warning now, spread betting and safety trading both carry a high level risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment. These products might be suitable for all investors and are all intended for people over the age of 18. Now, please ensure you're fully aware of the risk involved and if necessary, seek independent financial advice. Again, this is educational only. The content of this webinar is a personal opinion of the moderator, not intertrade.com. The content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. We advise to discuss your specific requirements with an independent financial advisor prior to entering any bet. Intro.com is not responsible and disclaims all of any liability for the content of comments during this session. Okay, so why use advanced candlesticks patterns? Okay, well, the use of basic candlesticks helps us identify trade signals. Okay, so advanced candlesticks, when we when we look at these formations, these are multiple patterns or candlestick prints that help us identify areas that we should, you know look at further you know, they warrant by the way they're positioned and the way they open and close in relation to each other okay and this makes us look at certain areas in the chart that should be of more interest than others so while basic candlestick patterns tell us what the market is thinking often um, by looking at these signals we can generate um, ideas of what's going to happen in the longer term so again it's just by looking at our individual candlestick um, prints with things like our hammers on the bottom of um, downward formations and our shooting stars on an upward move that gives an idea the market might be turning. When we put these candlestick patterns together, we, again, we can understand different types of how the market's getting to these points, um, which, you know, which we're looking for, uh, for the market to turn or, or in, indeed continue the existing trend. So again, it's very, very important to understand what our individual ca uh, candlesticks mean on their own but what they mean is grouped together. And again, we, when, we, when we look at different types of charts, you know, we start with our basics, our line charts, then we advance up to our, our bar charts. And again, patterns of bar charts, like inside bars, you know, we've probably all heard of, very, very basic patterns. And candlesticks, although they've been around for a long, long time, and probably a lot more used than, than, than the, the bar setup, uh, candlesticks, you know, again, people only ever take what they want to from these charts. So remember, you know, when we talk about charts and technical analysis, it's all about the self-fulfilling prophecy. But again, if we see a pattern emerging, the likelihood is if everyone's looking for it, the market will make this pattern. So again, the more we understand these candlestick patterns, the more we can understand how they build up and how the market's getting to these points. They might not always do what we expect at these points, but again, if we're prepared and understand what the market is thinking, we're already one head, you know, step ahead of the game that we can go with the signals if they're telling us, or again, you know, conversely, we can go against them if these patterns aren't filtering through to the market and doing as they say they should. So before we begin, there are a couple of things to remember when trading any technical analysis, okay? The points below uh, should always be adhered to in order to help um, cancel out any avoidable errors. So the biggest thing, again, when we're talking about trading technicals, is that people are looking for verbatim rules and things that can never be broken. Okay, remember when we trade in the markets, they're very organic. You know, they move in their own ways, and the 
susceptible to fundamental information, susceptible to market manipulation. But again, as long as we understand the rules in which we're playing with and how these formations happen and why they happen, we've got a good chance of um, being able to trade off the back of this. So the first thing we're going to look at when we're talking about these candlestick formations and patterns is confirmation. Okay, So it's important when using any candlestick pattern that we wait for confirmation. So, for example, if you wait for the pattern to form, okay, just because a candle looks like it might do a doji, it doesn't mean, if we're looking at the daily charts, that it necessarily will. Okay, so it's all about letting the markets print these candles, print these patterns uh, to give us the confirmation. Because again, otherwise, we're just trying to preempt these moves happening. And it's very, very important that we understand that everybody's looking for the high and the low and everybody's looking for the open and the close. The closes are very, very important when we're looking at individual candles. So again, when we're looking at trading around oscillators like our moving averages, yeah, it's very important if we, the next print closes above or below the moving average, that's confirmation. If we close inside our Bollinger Bands or indeed outside our Bollinger Bands, that's another confirmation. So all these things we need to look at and look at the closes in order to understand where the market is confirming that's its final decision. Okay? So another point we need to look at is knowing what system suits you. Okay? There's no holy grail in trading. You know, if you go on the internet and you subscribe to one of these systems that says we're guaranteed to make you 100% profit, you know, month on month, and you're never going to lose, really. I mean, what, what's the likelihood that's going to happen? You won't believe it in any other type of business. You won't believe in any other, you know, real life scenario. So why do you believe it in trading? Okay, there's always going to be elements of things that don't work, things that work for a time and get superseded. But the big thing is, as we always keep saying with this education and the modules and, and courses and webinars I present, I can only take you halfway. I can tell you what I've learned over the last 10 years and what's made me my money. And I can tell you the things that didn't work for me, the things that didn't work for other traders that I've taught. And again, I only ever tell you things that I think are important. But it's for, the, for you to then take this information go into the market and then use it to your benefit. We're all going to trade differently as individuals. We're all going to have different risk profiles, different views on technicals, fundamentals. But again, what I'm trying to teach today is the candlestick formations, they are what they are. You know, the market will tell you by printing and, and presenting you these formations what it's thinking. It's then down to you how you interpret this and how you trade with it. So the times of advanced candlesticks and patterns and formations we're going to talk about today. Okay, there's hundreds and hundreds of candlestick formations available. And again, it's all about, for me, the self-fulfilling prophecy and all about the market sentiment. It's all very well knowing, you know, these crazy, you know, really, really rare candlestick patterns for when they do occur. That's great because, you know, you might have seen it first and that's your signal. That might happen every one month, two months, every six months. You know, these things might take a long time. But if you're looking for the signals and the candlestick formations and patterns that every other trader is looking for, then that's what you need to do. Because again, they can become self-fulfilling. If you see a reversal pattern and the rest of the market sees it on your big time frames, like your hourlies and your dailies, okay, if everyone's looking for that to, to happen, then the likelihood is it's going to. So again, what I'm going to talk about today is the, the candlestick formations and patterns and the rules that I've stuck to for a long time and again throughout the years you know I've taught a lot of different traders the, you know these different types of patterns and again I'm not going to say they're always going to work for you and your markets but again as long as you're aware of them you're going to know when you can identify them and how you trade and what's going to be profitable and what's what's not so the best ones I can bring to the table today are the bearish and bullish in um, kickers a single island formation for reversal and continuation patterns, a cluster island formation, a bullish and bearish flag, which again is quite a common one, but again probably one of the most powerful ones. Then we have wedges and symmetrical triangles. So the last three are probably the most well known. And um, the first three we want to talk about are probably more back to the floor days when you know again when I used to uh, be a trader on, on the live, well not the live floor, but the, the the electronic floors within the city. These are the ones that you know the traders look for for really big. Um, indicators of momentum and reversal patterns. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about tonight is a, a bullish kicker. So this is a reversal pattern. So a bullish kicker is a pattern requiring at least three candlesticks to have already formed. 
So again, it can be used to look and identify a trend reversal. So in this pattern, the trend of the market is downwards. Okay, so A indicates the overall trend. Okay, we've got three big bodies of candles, big red candles indicating high volume, yeah, high volatility, big traded at every price, and the market is moving sharply downwards. Okay, so the last red candle should close near the bottom of the period's range, as in B. So on the following day, there should be a gap. Okay, so the gap is very important in this scenario. So the gap also tells us there's been some perhaps new news, but the market has moved suddenly, okay, to ne negate what's happened in the past, and we've almost opened, you know, pretty much 50% in the previous three red candle range. So on the following day, as I said, there should be a gap going upwards, indicating the market has moved quickly above the previous day's high, as shown in C. And then the market closes the day with a bullish green candle, and while the tail of the, you know, with a little tail, and again, we're all looking for them big green bodies, okay? But the, again, when we talk about volatility and volume, you can't always tell that on certain spread betting platforms. But as we know, if we see a long shadow or a long wick, that means there's been a big spike, okay? There's been a lot of movement, but not necessarily a lot of price traded. When we see the big solid bodies in these candles, that indicates a lot of um, prices have traded. And again, we've closed near the top of the range and opened near the bottom. So again, that's why we get them big solid candles. That's what we need to look at. So all them things put together, okay, that means that the, the trend is changing from a bearish pattern to a bullish. So again, what we'd look for after C is a point D, and we'd hopefully look to move uh, the next daily or hourly print. This is probably best looking at this from a daily perspective. So a D point would be that the next candle opens somewhere above that point C. So above the midpoint or preferably towards the high of that green candle in order to indicate that the market's going to continue going upwards and reversing that overall downtrend. Okay, so that's what we call a bullish kicker. So that's a reversal pattern. So likewise, on the opposite side, we have the bearish kicker. So again, that's a reversal pattern, just the same, but the other way around. So again, in this example, we see that the overall trend is upwards. We have three um, green candles big strong bodies indicating that we've had a sustained upward buying momentum. We're closing towards every single candle like we're doing B. And then again, when the next day's trading opens, we've opened below the previous low in B. Yeah, and again, the market's moved downwards and traded at every price and printed a big red body indicating that the up, upward trend is not only over, but we've opened below the previous low. Okay, we've come in to that particular uh, range, and we've almost, if you, if you did a Fibonacci retracement, a retracement, uh, retrace maybe to the 68.2% uh, level of that overall move of the three green candles. So again, another significant point. So if we had a point D, we'd expect it to open anywhere below the low or below that point C, where the arrow is indicating, to indicate we're going to continue to sell off and go from a bullish um momentum and direction to a bearish momentum. So again, it's all about looking out for these patterns on the higher time frames. There's no point looking for these patterns on a, on a, a one minute or five minute chart. They just don't work that way. Okay? So you need to always start, as I always say, at your maybe your weekly levels, look for these patterns to build up. Certainly your daily patterns, look for these cat these, these patterns to build up and then transpose them into your hourlies or maybe your fifteen minute um time frames in order to trade off. So continuation patterns. Now a continuation pattern um, are, are important part of any trading uh, day or any, any particular trend. So again think of a market as a car race. Okay? You have a trend, the race, in its entirety, but again when you go along in this race you're always going to have things like pit stops where the market might slow, take a break, rethink. And these stops, again, can form continuation patterns to indicate what, what, what the trend's going to do, if it's going to continue, or like we saw in the previous example, if it's going to reverse. So continuation patterns are important for two reason, reasons. Uh, they indicate areas for the trade um, to, to initialize or scaling in, where you put the original position, or make the position larger. 
Also, they help by identifying the levels in which a trend might have reversed. So again, the most common forms of continuation patterns are things that we've probably heard about in other technical analysis, um, maybe seminars or books, and they are pennants, triangles, flags, and wedges. So really, they're all basically kind of the same thing, but again, how we identify them and how we trade them are slightly different. So again, they're just all formations that basically are either at the top or bottom of a range or move in a particular fashion to make the particular shapes they're trying to identify. That all means that, again, with things like triangles, we're going from high volatility on the left-hand side, where the market is trading far apart, to the point of the triangle, where, again, there's very, very little trading, a little fur range, and then we're looking for the market to break out. So the key points to remember with any continuation pattern, okay, A is the initial move, the period in which the trend is formed. Now, B, the consolidation area. Now, that's a constrained area defined by the, the set support and resistance levels. And again, we'll come to that and we'll explain what these are in each pattern. Then we have the area of the breakout. So again, this is obviously the point of which the asset price breaks out of this point of consolidation and we form a new trend. That leads us on to B, uh, D, which is the new trend. And that's a continuation of the initial trend if it comes out of its consolid consolidation pattern. So again, by identifying these areas, you can start to pick your entry points, and then once we've picked the entry points, by using our other technical uh, analysis levels of support and resistance, we can see areas of attraction of where the market can move to. So again, that's our target areas and where we look to scale or exit trades. Okay, so again, all that put together in a chart and something what we might see every day, it doesn't matter what asset or what particular indices or stock we're trading, you know, again, this is just educational purposes. What we see is that A is indicating our initial move, okay? So initial move is lots of red candles, indecision for the green ones, the market's moving downwards. High side on the left, low side on the right. So B, okay, where we see the, our, our trend line now going across is our consolidation area. So the market's moved in one direction, and again, as we always say, the market that consolidates or it's a sideways movement is moving between two points. Now again, we like to see straight horizontal lines, but in this case, what we have is two lines that are coming together, okay? So this is almost like a triangle. All the points don't meet, eventually at some point in time they would, okay? But again, when we try and identify any trend, as long as it hits two points on the high side, two points on the low side, yeah, we can draw it in. Very similar to our trending channels that again are parallel equidistance apart. These are the same kind of things, but moving together. So that means that the market is consolidating. We had a big sell-off, but the market can't decide if it wants to recover or it wants to continue the sell-off point. So what we do is we see this waving pattern. So the wave pattern is, is, is quite nice in this example. Okay, the market hits our level of resistance on the top black line, okay, within the blue circle. Okay, so it can't recover, yeah, the initial move. So it moves back down, finds support, on our bottom black line and then moves up but again the momentum's lacking it's not making a higher high than the previous point so it's coming closer together it doesn't make a lower low so again we're consolidating even closer yeah and then when we get to this point we try and test again we can't break this level of resistance again we come down to a level of support and it's getting narrower and narrower so that means again that, that you know the market is trying to make a decision but it can't break higher it can't break lower so it just comes to a point where something has to give. So, okay, and in the last point here, where we see the black arrow, we do just test above the level of resistance, but it can't be sustained. Then we see a red candle, the next candle opens just towards the low, we break through, okay, and then D, we start a new trend. We've broken out of this sideways movement. Now the overall initial move, which is downwards, recovers slightly, gets smaller and smaller, and its consolidation pattern, we break through the low, and then we start to sell lower again. Okay, so that's again, just understanding the time frame in which we're trading within, these moves can take time to do. But once you identify it, you can trade this in different ways. You know, again, when we're in this particular, let's call it a triangle for argument's sake, every time we hit the level of resistance, we can sell and make some profit, sell, make some profit, sell, make some profit, and, then, and even build into it. Every time we go high, 
sell some more, go high, sell some more, and eventually break through on the third time, and we could hold that entire position. So that's, again, when I tell you about these patterns, there's lots of different ways you can interpret it and trade. If you know the initial move is downwards and you want to hold on to that, then you have to hold on to it for a period of time. If you want to just sell every high that's along that level of resistance, we know the initial move is down. We know that the trend line is sloping down. Yeah, and we know that the likelihood is with this market consolidating and getting towards together, the more emphasis will be on selling and breaking out on the low end rather than breaking through the, on, on the high end of resistance and recovering the initial move. So again, it's all down to you how you trade it. Very, very important that we understand the market conditions in which we're in. And again, again if the overall emphasis the direction of the market is down, then we should be looking for shorts in this example rather than to try bounces off levels of support. So wedges. So the prior example is a wedge formation. So a wedge formation is very much like a triangle, although it's not symmetrical and doesn't meet. Okay. So the formation of the wedge usually contains two types. Okay, so there's going to be a rising wedge or a falling wedge. So in that example, again, we saw the lines pointing downwards. Okay, and we're, we're on an initial downward sell-off move. So that's a falling wedge. So a rising wedge would be pretty much the same, but in a bullish market, the market going up. So the lines would point together. Yeah, pointing upwards. So both of the patterns should have two trends. Okay, so they're shown as our two boundary lines of support and resistance. So very much like, again, as I said, our trend channels or any other levels of support and resistance we put in. So the wedge, unlike the triangle or pennant, do not have uh, two sloping lines and an equal gradient. One is generally steeper than the other, which indicates the overall trend. So in contrast to symmetrical triangles, which have no definitive slope and no bullish or bearish bias, the rising wedges should have a bearish bias and a falling wedge should have a bullish bias. Okay, so again, that's something we should look out for. And again, we like to see perfect patterns on our charts, but when they're not perfect, that can give us the edge. When we see one particular line leading, as we did in that previous wedge, okay, that there was one slightly steeper line that was going downwards, that dictates the overall defining trend. So that's why we should sell all along that. So symmetrical triangles. So again, we all obviously went through things like this at school. So triangles can be used to identify uptrends and downtrends. Okay? The two lines on the triangle should have at least four points they've touched. Broken, that's not, you know, we're never going to get perfect, perfect patterns. We're allowed to break these lines, but shouldn't really have closed or above or below this trend. Okay? So again, the, you know, the points are never going to be absolutely perfect. You know, no chart is ever like that. But if we do see the odd little breakout, as long as we haven't closed significantly above or below it. Again, it still makes these lines and these formations valid. So again, a balance between supply and demand in the forex markets, for example, is implied by the symmetrical converging resistance and support lines. So the price action bounces between the two lines until a break occurs. So a triangle forming uh, during an uptrend is usually a sign that the trend will continue unless the lower support is broken and then the signal could be reversed. So again, by seeing this particular example here, it's quite a nice example. We don't see, again, if we see this wick here towards the, the middle of the level of support on the bottom, we do break through. So again, that doesn't mean that the trend is not still valid. Again, when we close, we close right on the level of support. So we see a nice symmetrical triangle, you know, a nice pattern. And again, we're on the back of one, two, three, four, big green candles, hit a level of resistance, the market moves down, moves in a wave pattern and consolidates like we saw in the previous wedge, and then we do start to hit, yeah, the, the, where the market is consolidating quite tightly, that level of resistance here, we break through, we we'll again a good green big candle showing a lot of volatility, a lot of volume, a lot of prices traded, and the market moves back up. So again, the symmetrical triangle doesn't necessarily tell you where the market's going to break out. But if it's symmetrical and we're on the back of a bullish move, the likelihood is, again, it's probable trading. The likelihood is if we look to break on the high side, that's the way the market will go. So again, it's trading with the market conditions and understanding the bigger picture. So trading a symmetrical triangle. Okay, so in A, yeah, the uptrend is clearly prevalent before a series of consolidation candles form. 
So note how a flag type shape forms and both an uptrend and a downtrend appear in B. Okay, so we have no real justification of where the market's going to go. Again, it's ranging, it's moving sideways between the level of support and resistance. Now in C, the market breaks. Yeah, most of the momentum uh, that traders buy through at the break, remembering that the trend is your friend, we break through. Okay, so again, we're looking on the back of these four green candles. Okay, we bounce off the levels of resistance that's coming down. So we're coming to this consolidation pattern by B, the B, uh, the big blue bubble. Okay, so that means the market's going to move between these two defined ranges. But again, the likelihood is that D becomes our very, very ultimate low point of where our ultimate support is. So if we don't test that, the likelihood is that at some point within this very narrow margin is a good place to get long. So when we do eventually break through the level of resistance at point C, you know, the market's not going to look back and it's going to continue the overall trend. So again, if you want to trade in this way, you know, again, any time we get towards these low levels like E, as long as we close back within our level of support here, we buy. Okay, the market comes back down, but it doesn't break the line again, so we buy again. So we can average in. Okay, we can average in a position anywhere in that blue bubble until D, this solid level of support is broken. If it's not, yeah, then we just continue the long trade because we know the likelihood is it's going to break out at point C and continue higher. So that's again, you know, you have to understand if you're going to be trading shorter time frames and just trading anywhere between, you know, this blue bubble to buy low and sell high. Or if you're looking to build a big position, so when we do get towards the point where the market's going to break out, you've already averaged in a bigger position and allow you to take all that on board when the final momentum takes the market higher and moves in a quick direction. Because, you know, again, people are trying to not only get long, but get out of positions if they're wrong. And, and you know, short at point C, you know, again, the quicker we move up, the more people will be getting out of short positions, making the market move even higher. So that's how we trade these kind of things. So bull flags. Now, bull flags are a continuation chart pattern found within an uptrending market. So they're formed after a steep trend forms to the upside by two type parallel down sloping trend lines, otherwise known as a trend channel. So again, trend channels are great. We've got whole presentations on that. But a, a bull flag, again, indicates that we already know what's going to happen. Yeah, That the bull flag is telling us, although we're trending in a downward uh, channel with two parallel lines, that the likelihood is that the momentum that's happened before in the buying action and the way these candlesticks have formed, that if we don't break through the low ends at point C, yeah, that the likelihood is that B is going to be our level of, obviously, overall resistance. But if that breaks, that's a continuation pattern for a bull flag to make sure that the market's going to move higher. So again, how we trade it, again, we see these big green uh, candles uh, indicated by A. We hit our level of uh, resistance, or we come back, we touch our levels of support, and again, we don't really look back. So again, we hit point B, we come back to point C, which is our overall level of support. The market waves, you know, between these two parallel lines, but when it looks to buy back up, you know, again, as long as we're long anywhere above C or anywhere where we see a, a green candle, we know that we're on the right side of it. Because again, even if we test this level C, which is our overall stop, you know, if we don't break through, it's still, the, the trade is still valid. We're going back off this formation of a, a, a bull flag that even though the market's moving down from our high, yeah, until we break these parallel lines, the actual flag that's forming, the likelihood is that we're going to break through on the high side and the overall trend is going to continue. So bull flags are another one to look out for. Anywhere that we, you know, we don't trade below this point C is a good option for a long. And again, we, we can always get out for profit when we hit a level of uh, resistance at, at the B line. But again, if we're looking for breakout markets and them kind of volatile situations, then that's the trade we want to do. Yeah, we want to look for the breakout. So we get long in anticipation the markets will break higher. So again, it's all about patience and picking the right time to trade. So bear flags are exactly the same. Okay, so that's where we see the market move down, the market move then in a parallel direction, like a flag, almost like a golf club even. So C is then the point. We know the markets had one, two, three, four, five 
big solid red candles as in a the market is looking to sell off every time we get high um, towards point c in the market yeah we don't see any closes above it you know as soon as we do we see the market trying to push back so we get short anywhere as close to c as we can and as we hit our point d the market eventually breaks down and that's our trade it's exactly the same as the bull flag but on the opposite side so look for a downwards move yeah two parallel lines pushing the market upwards in a combined area then you look for the high point to get short and then the weakness go into the market and sell into the momentum okay so that's a bear flag so two patterns you see more often than not so I, I definitely would look out for them so then we move on to island patterns so island patterns are usually a strong uh, short to medium term signal for continuation or reversal so islands are called so because of the island like pattern that forms at the top of the bottom of a trend and that's by an individual candle so again um, they're identified by a gap between one uh, at least one candlestick and the two candlesticks on either side and then there are different types uh, ranging from the single candle formation again to the more powerful cluster formations where there's more than one candle involved so when looking for an island pattern uh, again you're looking for the indecision in the market a battle between the bull and bears to understand if the bulls are going to win in a bullish situation and continue the, the pattern higher or the bears conversely push the market lower or again if you've seen the top of a bullish movement or a reversal or the bottom of a, a bullish movement <coughs> and, and uh, a bearish movement and a reversal for the market to push back higher so again something to note is the signals are strongest after you've seen a big trend okay so the bigger the trend and you see these patterns the more likelihood they are to happen very very quickly after these uh, these patterns have printed so it's all about what's happened before to try and predict what's going to happen in the future and again these individual patterns these individual clusters are a good way of uh, establishing a continuation to this overall move or a big reversal so the first one we'll look at is the island reversal pattern so the example here shows a market in an uptrend and then reverses so the candlestick is a strong uptrend and gaps up above the previous day's high initially in a indication uh, bullishness in the market sentiment so however it fails to rally on the day and in b the market gaps below the low of the prior, previous day forming an island pattern okay so a again could be called a shooting star although the body is a little bit too big but then again what we see is the market in b gap below that low yeah which indicates that's now an island because it's not trading within the previous day or the previous trading range so that gap appears between uh, the blue line and B so that again that indicates then that we could see a big move lower and as the candle B prints the market does sell off so again anytime we see that pattern where the next candle opens as a gap below yeah at the top of a, a bullish pattern could indicate the market's ready to reverse and sell off and again the bigger the trend we see the quicker or the bigger that candle is going to be because the quicker it's going to move and the, the more volume is going to trade so then we have an island continuation pattern so unlike the reversal pattern the continuation indicates an acceleration in the trend so note in the uptrend a as the market rallies higher okay after more upside you see a gap b on the day when the market fails to close close within uh, that range and test lower okay so the market doesn't um, fill that gap okay so we see the market then open on the next day as an island on its own okay so it's moved above the previous day's high and then continued to trade upwards yeah and then in C again we see another gap and the market then moves higher and trades upwards so what we'd look to do again if we're trading off the uh, off the daily candles that anywhere we see that you know would, would be if the gap isn't filled and we come back to you know to the previous high of this uh, this initial gap then that's telling us the market wants to move higher so we look to get long anytime there and again when the next candle opens you know significantly above leaving this gap you know again this is an island on its own it's not traded within at all so that means something significant some big technical pattern some fundamental information has come into the market and it's pushed the market higher continuing that trend even longer so again it's not so easy to trade intraday that way because you have to we'd have to hold your positions overnight 
that's a daily chart but it doesn't mean you can't trade this way uh, from the opens so again if you see that pattern yeah between B and C on the next day as long as the market opens here as we see at the bottom all that green candle yeah we can make profit from okay we know we've not closed the gap we've not closed the previous gap where B is so that day is already a, a bullish trend we've opened above the previous high we've left the gap we've not tried to fill it therefore we buy into that strength yep so that's continuation pattern so that's how we trade that on smaller time frames looking off this as a daily chart so Ireland cluster formations okay this is where it gets a little bit more technical a little bit more complicated okay so the Ireland cluster formation works on the simple principle that the single candle Ireland yeah however it is much stronger when it's in a formation rather than on its own okay so to form a cluster you need um, more than one floating candle so the floating candle again is where there's a gap either side so notice how a the market is clearly an upwards trend yeah in B you see the market suddenly gap higher and range for a few days above the trend in a without ever closing the gap that we can see indicated by the line C so in D the rally continues as a candle forms above um, the high are complete, completed with a gap, leaving a bullish island, island cluster. So B is basically a cluster of islands together. And although it's in a sideways trend, it hasn't closed the gap to C. Yeah, but again, it's indicating we're trading above the, the initial trend and in a new range. So again, when we see point D happen, we've broken above the previous high, and the trend's going to continue higher. So again, if we don't close this gap. That we see within C every point again we could draw some horizontal lines in here every time we don't try and close that gap C it's an opportunity for the formation to, to again prove it's going to move higher from the initial trend in A because we're not closing that gap so that indicates the markets moving and building up pressure to push higher and to break on the high side and, and make new trades so if you've got long anywhere where the line B is yeah you're pretty safe you don't get stopped out because you know you put place your stop below this gap closing so again the markets trending sideways so we move down okay we don't take a bit of pain here the market moves higher and again if these are dailies and you kept you long when D opens again it's continued the island cluster formation by creating a new gap on the high side fairly equal to the gap on the low side and trending higher so that will be all the profit you have to work with while the the island formation is telling you it's continuing and it's upwards move it's getting much more powerful because it's a cluster. It's a number of candles that are still trading above that gap, telling you that the island formation is still valid. And again, as long as they don't close that gap, yeah, the trend is still valid and the overall pattern is still valid. So when we talk about trading with candlesticks, we can also trade overlying uh, our in, our oscillators. So again, different things we've talked about. It depends what presentations or what parts of my course you've listened to, but oscillators really enhance our charts and tell us things that you know again that can help us refine our entry and exit points so again the formation on the next slide is going to tell us um, of how we can trade with one oscillator a moving average so again a 50 day or 200 day moving average pretty standard stuff but again when we tie this up with our um, indicators and with our other candlestick patterns these are the things that are going to help us Okay, so trading with our oscillators and trading with overlaid um, patterns and charts, again, it all helps to build up a picture of the market and what it's doing. Again, we can't always rely on highs and lows, um, head and shoulders, etc., etc. The more things that are useful that we can overlay, the more um, we're going to see from our charts. So we'll get probably best to show in a chart here. Okay, so pay attention to when the candles both open and close so to where they close on the charts so this way you can look for a candlestick formation to form and then the confirmation when the when the candles close so again it's all about looking for these opens and closes because that's what's really important when we're looking at these um, overlaid oscillators because that's when they come into their effect okay so in a we see a bullish hammer formation okay so that's a single candlestick pattern formation we see the market moving downwards one two three four five six seven eight red candles with the exception of a little green one there you see a hammer which is a long tail a little body at the bottom indicating yeah there's a bottom of the, the trend 
and so reversal patterns the market could move higher so the candle sits close above the moving average and this candle here clearly indicated by the arrow so that's important okay so we've had the initial confirmation in a that the market is looking to reverse we've seen two small green candles and a big strong green candle where the market has closed above the moving average indicating that's again above the moving average trend it's confirming our initial move in the bullish hammer yeah then C a failure to close below the moving average yeah which indicates the market is still wanting to move higher but then again in D yeah we see the market then break below this moving average and start to sell off indicating that overall correction or initial A formation of the bullish hammer is now no longer negated and as we're closing below the moving average that upwards move is now over and we're continuing the initial downward move that we saw so again it's all about using the moving average for when it's valid as we you know again as we keep closing below sorry above the moving average that's indicating that the initial trade we've done is still valid so we keep buying on the moving average and looking to make profits so again we don't make as much as we would do from buying the initial move yeah and watching the market go up but we don't lose so a lot of the times in trading it's not losing that's the important part not just how we make the money and again when we break through and close below the moving average that initial trade or that particular whatever trade or trend we're going to call it is over and we have to make a new opinion so again it's all very important when we're looking at moving averages where the candles close in relation to this moving average above or below so again the longer the time frame yeah your 15 minute your 30 minute your hourlies the more important they are and the, you know again if you trade off one minute or five minute charts you know the open and close above these are going to be less important so again Again, when you're using a moving average, a 50-day or 200-day moving average is probably the best, in my opinion, to use. So trading with two oscillators. So again, guys, a little bit more complicated. But then for extra confirmation, use another oscillator that can be added. Okay, so note the example here is a 20-day moving average. So again, it depends on what time frame you, you, you're trading off. We can do a 20-day, 50-day, 100-day, 200-day. It doesn't really matter. Again, it depends what time frame you're looking at and what works for you. So notice how the moving average is across the blue moving average in B after the hammer in pattern A. Okay, that's the signal of the imminent trend change. Yeah, it's printed. And the green candle crosses the 10-day moving average, giving a third signal to buy at point C. Okay, although the market gives three separate signals all at different times, it's important to understand that each one adds its own conviction. So again, to trade with the two oscillators here. You might decide to split your initial trade into three parts yeah buying at the hammer formation then adding the rest once we close above the moving average on the 10 and 20 day so again that's how we'd average into a trade so we see that two oscillators again by using the 10 and 20 day moving average just gives us a bit of extra confirmation we can widen that out we can do a 10 day and a 50 day we can do a 20 day and a 100 day it doesn't matter you know, all the lines are going to be is further apart to show more volatility but again the perfect way to trade will be to open your position at A when we see the hammer so it will be that, that next green candle that tells you the market should move up from this downward trend then C put some more into the trade because again we're approaching the midpoint and then anywhere excuse me above the moving average is where we buy an average into the position until we see a close below the moving average both the 10 and the 20 day and see this red candle start to form and the sell-off happen yeah and that's where we exit the trade so again none of this is a perfect science and none of it is, is easy to do but if you're aware of these candlestick formations and they can use the moving averages and other oscillators to reconfirm that the market's telling you you're not wrong then the likelihood is you are wrong sorry you are right so when the market tells you you know that you're not wrong you stay in the trade and that's what's difficult to do sometimes to know you're right and to stay in because you know the rules always tell you to take profit but if the market is telling you that it's not changing its opinion it's going with the original signal as in you know this example the bullish hammer and you're closing above the moving average then again you keep buying until the market tells you you're wrong maximize your position so okay in the last two illustrations we've used moving averages to help um, indicate visual signs to buy and sell so another indicator we can use is the RSI so the relative strength index so note in a how the RSI line is oversold territory so anything below um, 
25 is oversold, anything above 75 is overbought. So again, relative strength tells us that if you know we're looking for these moves to indicate what's going to happen in the overall chart by what's happening in the RSI, anything above 75 means too many people have got long positions and it's overbought, therefore the market should come down. And anywhere below 25 is oversold, so all the sellers should come out of the market and the market should buy it back up. So again, in A, we see that the market is below 25 to tell us that it, it, it's, it's over, oversold. So again, that would be the hammer, tells us a good place to get long, two confirming indicators, and the market moves higher. Okay, so again, it's not something you can use on its own, but it's something to give you extra um, confirmation. If the market's at a low, and the RSI is telling us it's oversold, the likelihood is we can buy at the bottom of the range, and the market should move higher. So that's how we use the candlestick patterns and our RSI, our moving averages together to gauge what the market is telling us. So again, there's disadvantages to anything that we trade, but there's a disadvantage to oscillators. So there are hundreds, again, of oscillators we can use, which makes it difficult to choose. So sometimes there are too many, and it's impossible to find the right combination. So you have to find out what works for you. Okay? So try them all out. Try the ones we've talked about tonight. There'll be others we'll go through in the oscillators section, all about um, Bollinger Bands, um, MACD. Again, all these different things you can find in traded charts. But again, overlay them. You know, see what they tell you. You know, try and use them in the candlestick patterns, which don't change. And then try and find out, you know, what these oscillators mean and what they do and how they affect the, the movement in the market. So, again, they're not always effective, and you can't trade them just on their own. You have to use them with the candlestick. Uh, okay, well, it's recorded, Mohammed, no problem. Um, you can, you can listen, listen to the rest of this. That's no problem at all. So, again, you know, when you're trading these, these uh, oscillators, you can't just use them on their own. You have to use them with your candlestick formations. You know, you, you view on fundamental news, the overall direction of the trend, the market, you know, where we're trading in the range. You know, the, all these things have to come together. So these are things we have to listen out for and look out for because they all work in conjunction. And again, the more things you can put together that work in conjunction, the stronger your, your emphasis and your, your impotence to trade are going to be. So the advantages of using uh, multiple oscillators is that each signal reinforces the potential trend and the change or continuation. So two signals generally are going to be better than one. So oscill oscillators generate fewer false signals, uh, enabling selective trading. So again, candlesticks on their own can generate countless signals, and you, you can't trade them all. So again, these just reinforce what the overall candlestick patterns and what the charts are doing. So the summary of trading oscillators is we can see now that by having more than one signal can strengthen conviction. Okay? So on trend days, we can use oscillators such as moving averages. Okay? On days where the market is ranging, we can use the oscillators such as Bollinger Bands to, to show us where the extremes of the markets could be on the high or the low side. And again, we can use sentiment readers such as volume, RSI, stochastics to give us more confirmation of what type of market we're actually trading. So we put all this together in a working example. Okay, so this is a 15-minute candle chart. Okay, so it's easy to identify potential buy or sell signals. The issue is how to determine their strength. Okay, so bear with me here. So A indicates a doji after a move down, which is a strong buy signal. But without A, but without being able to tell if the market is overbought or oversold, we're just guessing if that trend's going to break. So B shows a hammer formation two days after the doji. It's not a great hammer, but it's still, you know, a hammer. So that may initiate a long where we can buy the market as the market rallies. But then again, after the first signal was a loser, it's hard to identify the bottom of that range. So C then shows a rejection yeah, of a short-term sell signal. However, that would have been a loser, as in D. So all that really means is that off our individual candlestick patterns, we've got these signals, but they don't always tend to work out and just because we've seen indecision in the market at point A, we might look to see that's the bottom and buy, and that's a loser. At B, we might see the market's, again, a hammer at the bottom of the range, so the market could buy up. It does, but it's a kind of a false move, so the market comes back to us. Then in C, again, we see that the market is showing it almost like a shooting star, even though it's a green body type of uh, pattern. But again, instead of the market moving downwards and selling, it goes back up. So the majority of them trades would have done off the single patterns are going to be losers. So we have to overlay some oscillators to help clarify the picture. 
Okay, so again, the prior example shows at least four signals to trade off the bias of one candlestick. It showed a doji star, a hammer, a shooting star, and a bearish engulfing pattern. So some patterns work better than others, but in general, um, we're, sim we're simply getting too many signals contradicting each other in that time frame. And again, it's 15 minutes, quite a small time frame, in order to really have any conviction to buy or sell with any real confidence. So what we can do is, is, is overlay you know, our simple RSI, our moving average, and draw some trend lines in. So again, the market is not oversold below 25. If you look at the RSI, it's in mid-range, meaning the downtrend may accelerate or pause, and also that the market has um, started to range. So the moving average is telling you that the market is recovering. Sorry, it's ranging because many candles have crossed it. Okay, you know, we're not closing significantly above it and moving in one direction. We're closing above it, hitting resistance, coming down, going through the moving average, hitting with support, and going back up. So we're not seeing the moving average telling us any direction. And also with the lines we see, we've seen a wedge formation coming together, yeah, with a with a bearish pattern, with a bearish line of resistance on the top being a lot more uh, aggressive in its slope than the level of support on the bottom. So again, what does this all tell us? What does the market tell us it's going to do? Right? What's it consolidating for? Well, there we go. It's continuing the overall trend. So again, we go back to the previous slide. Okay. So again, we've seen the downward slope here. Yeah. Where we're hitting the level of resistance. Okay. We're breaking through the moving average. We're hitting the levels of support. But the market again has hit 75 on the overbought. So the overbought is telling us on the RSI that we're overbought. It's starting to move down. As it moved, moves down, we've hit our levels of resistance and coming down on the steep slope. That's telling us the overall market sentiment being bearish. Yeah. So the bearish point is if we get short any point along this line of resistance here, we close below the moving average. We don't hesitate when we hit through the level of support here. Big red candle. We open above below the previous candle starts to move lower we're well away from the point uh, of the 75 over bought region and we're moving towards the oversold where the market could reverse okay so <clears throat> in in summary what we have to do is use the candlesticks in the right time frame look out for our individual candle print but then use them together for more clarification for our candlestick formations then overlay our oscillators like our moving average perhaps Bollinger Bands, you know, and our overall trend wedges, uh, symmetrical triangles, to give us a direction of not where we could only see breakouts, but the opposite point. So where the market is looking to break out, that's where we should be getting maximum profit. We should already be long or short on the opposite range of that. Okay, so if we know the market will break on the low side, we should be short from any point of um, resistance on that top end of the wedge or the top end of that triangle. Yeah, that's where the market is telling us that that's the extreme of the market and we look for the weakness to break as our extra profit. All right, guys, well, that's, like I said, it's a brand new presentation. There's a lot of information to take in there. It's, um, candlesticks is massive and it's very, very important. I've tried to consolidate as much as I can to things that are no work and to the patterns that are no work. Is there anything anyone would like to ask, any questions anyone have? Again, remember it's recorded so we can revisit this and, and go through it again, but... Remember to use these patterns on the right time frames, the higher the better, and then use your smaller time frames for entry, and always get involved on the extremes. If you're looking to sell, yeah, then the point of support should be the breakout. You should already be short before that, and that should be on the counterpart, the opposite level of resistance. Okay, So look for the opposite part of the trade to eg enter the trade, and then the op again, the, the low point of resistance, sorry, support, or the high point of resistance, if we're looking for a breakout, to get your extra profit from. Okay, guys, I see a few people um, putting uh, some comments through in the chat window, so let's wait for these to come through. Brilliant, Paul. I'm glad, I'm glad you found it useful and clear. Um, yeah, again, MACD is another one we can use. Uh, again, not massively similar to you know to things like RSI, but again, the trouble is we can overlay all these different oscillators. It gets very, very complicated, and we get too many conflicting signals. It's all about what, you know, using the time frames, the candlestick patterns, and overlaying what's useful. And again, using them for the right market pattern. Some, th some oscillators work better in ranging markets. Some work better, uh, better in, in um, trending markets. So again, it's all about picking the right 
market conditions to the right oscillators and making sure that you use them in the right way together. Very, very important that we do that, guys. Uh, again, guys, I'll put the feedback form up. So again, this is a new presentation. Please, please tell me how you found it. Um, I'll put my email address down. I'm always here for constant support, guys, as always. Um, we're going to see a lot more uh, material rolled out uh, from Elliott Wave, um, Bollinger Bands, which I didn't go into too much detail for this because there's a whole presentation on it. Bollinger Bands is something I use a lot. I find very, very powerful and very good in these uh, particular markets uh, for looking for points of breakout. Again, I'll be doing more live trading sessions. We'll be running the, the uh, Trade for Living course, the Building Box of Trading course again. So again, any comments you've got, guys, or anything you'd like to see or anything you'd like me to write on any particular subject, Please send it through to my email because that, again, lets me go to InterTrader and, and tell me what the public wants. You know, you're my, you're my voice, guys. You know, again, I can only tell you the benefit of what I've taught people over the years and what I know works. But it's important that you guys tell me what you're looking for, what markets you're investigating, what edge you're looking for, so I can help you. Um, you know, again, make the best of your, the, the best of your trading ability. Well, I really appreciate this, guys. You know, your 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 feedback as always is absolutely uh, imperative to to keeping me motivated. Um, so again, I mean, yeah, there's different defaults you can use. Again, Mish is asking about, you know, the RSI is set to to 14. Again, it's all about periods. You know, think about how, what time frame you, you're trading over. You know, if you're trading 15 minute um, candles and you're only looking at the previous 10, you know, again only use a 20 day moving average because that will give you a more concise idea of what the market is doing right now. If you're looking at a, you know, three months worth of data on a daily, then use a 200 day moving average to give you a more smoother curve. It's all about setting these oscillators and these default settings to what time frame or what period you're looking to trade over. If you're looking to keep a trade for five minutes, okay, there's no point setting a 200 day moving average. Yeah. So again, very important guys. It's all about the time frame, putting these things together. And again, you know, making them work in conjunction for you. Well, the time frames that are stronger um, are the longer ones. But again, the 200-day moving average is, you know, there's generally 200 moving, uh, sorry, trading days in a year. So that gives you the smoothest curve. But try overlaying a 20-day and a 100-day. See what that works for you. See how it pictures, you know, it makes the, the chart picture for you and what you know works for your signals. Um, Maggie, the best oscillator for forex. Well, again, I mean, you can't go wrong with your simple moving averages, but again, I'd probably say Bollinger Bands are good um, because it shows you, you know, good consolidation points and also where the market could break out. Alvin, if you want to scalp on small time frames, what's the smallest time frame you can use? Well, I mean, the smallest time frame you can use is, is, is ticks, individual price movements. To be honest, Alvin, if, you, if you're looking to scalp markets, it's pretty tricky at the minute because the market's so volatile. I'd, I'd generally look on your three or five minutes to try and give you some sort of edge to get in because again you're going to be trading on the spread